Okay, Google, explain molecular geometry with five electron domains to me, please. Oh, should have charged it up. Okay, so this could be phosphorus pentafluoride. Central phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five electron domains. They're single bonds, and these are phosphorus, excuse me, these are fluorine atoms going around here. So this is a nonpolar molecule. The fluorine uh, has a higher electronegativity, so the, the fluorines here are attracting electrons towards them and uh, pulling them away from the central phosphorus. But the attraction is overall equal. They're not being pulled to this side more than that side or up more than down. So the IB like it when you say that the bond dipoles cancel. If you measured the bond dipoles, they would all cancel out. You'd have to add them up in 3D, but the IB don't expect you to do that. Just approximate it in your brain. What if I take off one of the fluorines and pop on a bromine? Ah, oh, well now this is polar. Fluorine loves electrons more than bromine. Has, they have higher electronegativities. So this end of the molecule is going to be slightly negative, leaving this to be slightly positive. There's now a dipole. If you sum the bond dipoles, they don't cancel. That's how the IB likes to say it. Sticking on another bromine at this end, well, now I've made it nonpolar again. This is nonpolar. It's more negative around the center where the fluorines are and slightly more positive at the end. But the definition of polar is one end of the molecule is negative and one end of the molecule is positive. And to be honest, both ends are a little bit positive here. But I could have switched out the bromine with that equatorial fluorine. OK, so you could argue that this is now polar. Bromine's at one end, slightly positive. Fluorine's at the other end, slightly negative. Let's reset. Now, you have to take them off the equatorial to get the next one. So this is the uh, pole to pole axis. These are on the equator, these ones here. Let's pull one off the equatorial. And that leaves me with a seesaw molecule. This has five electron domains around the central atom, but one of them is a lone pair. Four of them, in this case, are bonds, covalent bonds. So this could be sulfur tetrachloride, sulfur tetrachloride. And is this polar? Well, since chlorine has higher electronegativity than sulfur, it looks like this end's gonna be slightly negative, leaving this end to be slightly positive. Next shape, let's pull another one off the equator. And that gives the T shape. This could be a chlorine trifluoride, Cl, F, F, and F. Now the fluorines, are, uh, well, these two dipoles cancel, but this one over here, that's gonna be slightly negative on this side, leaving this side slightly positive. So this indeed is gonna be polar as well. And finally, pulling off the final equatorial, that leaves me with this one here, which is linear. Now this would probably be I3 minus, the triiodide ion. I, I, and I, it's a negative charge. So that's nonpolar. The electrons aren't gonna go this end or that end because there's equal attraction, equal love of the electrons from this, this, and that ID. Okay, Google, six electron domains, molecular geometry. I can't believe it worked. Look at that. And we're done. No, we're not done. Alrighty, so uh, this is uh, sulfur hexafluoride. One sulfur with six fluorines. And again, this is a non-polar molecule. Why would you think that this end is slightly negative? Well, there's fluorine on this end, but you know what? There's a fluorine on that end. And so the pull from each side means that the electrons are evenly distributed along that axis there, neither at one end or the other. And you know what? That's the same for the other two. So this is nonpolar. But if I was to add chlorines, what could I do? Well, it depends where you add them. Okay, so this is still nonpolar. Even though fluorine likes electrons more than chlorine does, it has a higher electronegativity, this end isn't going to be negative because there's just as much pull on the electrons from that end. 
And so again, how do the IB like it? That's right. All the I all the IBs cancel, idiot. All the uh, bonds dipoles cancel, so it's nonpolar. But of course, I could have put my four chlorines here, and now yeah, that probably is polar. This end negative, and this end slightly positive, slightly negative, slightly positive. All right, let's reset. Keeping my six electron domains, I've now made bromine pentafluoride. Bromine pentafluoride. Is that polar? Well, this bond dipole and this bond dipole cancels. This one and this one cancels. The electrons are neither being pulled this way or that way. But what about this? Well, this is fluorine and this is bromine. So yet yeah, fluorine is more electronegative than bromine. So the top of the molecule is going to be slightly negative, bottom slightly positive. Now, I know what you're saying. How can this end be slightly positive? There's a, an electron pair here. Well, it doesn't work like that. You've got to go not with the electron pairs in IB. You've got to go with the, uh, you've got to go with the atoms, such as fluorine and sulfur. Next one. Is xenon tetrafluoride. XeF4, and this again is nonpolar. It's a planar molecule, it's flat, 90 degrees, and a nonpolar one. And we're done.